On July 27, 2023, Ghana's cabinet decided to ban the export of unprocessed minerals, like lithium, following in the footsteps of several other African nations taking similar measures as part of a shared strategy to maximize returns from their natural resources. In general, African countries in present times have developed tendencies to rebel against neo-colonialist economic schemes. As evidenced by Ghana's new policy, which is expected to be passed into law by the end of 2023, the West African giant aims to retain a significant proportion of the value chain before a product is rolled out for export, according to the country's Minister of Land and Natural Resources, Samuel A. Jinapur. Ghana is only one such country making sharp turns in the exportation milieu. In December 2022, Zimbabwe took a similar step regarding export of unprocessed lithium. A circular put out by the Southern African country's Ministry of Mines and Mining Development said the move was meant to realize President Emerson Menangagwa's vision of seeing the country becoming an upper-middle-income economy. More than a dozen African nations, including Democratic Republic of Congo, Nigeria, and Namibia, have restricted such exports intermittently or completely banned them outright according to research published in May earlier this year by the Africa Development Forum. Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video, we'll be presenting 10 African countries that banned export of raw materials to Europe. If you're new here, please be sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications in order to be notified on future uploads. Looking at relevant stats, between 2017 and 2022, the energy sector was the main driver behind a tripling of demand for lithium, while demand for cobalt grew by 70% and nickel rose by 40%, according to a report released in July by the International Energy Agency, IEA. Knowing that most of these minerals have rich reserves in Africa, there is an ever-growing demand for their exportation to the Western world. But several analysts point out that instead of merely reacting to the raw material and mineral demands of industries abroad, African countries should look inward to chart a better course for renewable energy development and use renewed Western interest in the continent's raw materials to improve their capacity in mining. So, let's jump right onto the list. 10. Niger bans uranium exports. Over the last 10 years, the 88,200 tons of natural uranium imported into France came mainly from three countries, Kazakhstan, 27%, Niger, 20%, and Uzbekistan, 19%. Niger plays an important role in France's supplies, but its importance is overestimated by some politicians. On a global scale, however, Niger has become a secondary producer over the years, as production costs are high and prices slumped until 2016. By 2022, Niger accounted for just 4% of global production, well behind Kazakhstan, 43%, Canada, 15%, Namibia, 11%, and Australia, 8%. Niger, which has Africa's highest grade uranium ores, produced 2,020 metric tons of uranium in 2022, about 5% of world mining output, according to the WNA. This was down from 2,991 tons in 2020. The world's three biggest producers are Kazakhstan, Canada, and Namibia. Niger has one major mining operation in the north, operated by France's state-owned Orano, another major mine which closed in 2021, with one under development. Two of the major uranium mines in Niger are Arleet Mining Site. Several open pit mining sites are located near the city of Arleet in the northwest and operated by Somer, a joint venture of Orano and Niger's state-owned Sopamin. Akuta Mining Site. This underground mine near Akokan, southwest Oif Arlit, produced 75,000 metric tons of uranium from 1978 until March 2021, when it closed after its ore reserves had been depleted. 9. Ghana imposes ban on export of unprocessed gold. On July 27, 2023, Ghana's cabinet decided to ban the export of unprocessed minerals like lithium following the trend of several other African nations taking similar measures as part of a shared strategy to maximize returns from their natural resources. Ghana's new policy, which is expected to be passed into law by the end of the year, aims to retain a significant proportion of the value chain before a product is rolled out for export, according to the country's Minister of Land and Natural Resources, Samuel A. Jinapur. 
It isn't a coincidence that African countries rich in minerals like lithium, a key component of batteries, are realigning their export strategies when governments in the developed world are pushing for a shift towards green technology, prompting the major automakers to focus on electric vehicles. 8. Gabon bans the export of logs. Since January 2010, Gabon has banned the export of wood in the form of logs and supported a progressive industrialization of the timber industry in order to increase its contribution to a diversified economy. Implementing effective policies towards economic diversification and sustainable development will depend on having a thorough understanding of the impacts of past policies as well as possibilities going forward. On May 15, the West African nation of Gabon implemented a total ban on log exports. According to the International Timber Trade Organization, ETTO, the ban has been efficiently enforced to date, and log exports from Gabon have completely halted. ITO also reports that around 60,000 cubic meters of logs meant mostly for China remains in port, halted by the ban. However, the drop in log exports by Gabon appears to have pushed logging in nearby Cameroon. Gabon hopes to fill job loss due to the ban with expansion in its processed wood market and eventually move its market toward finished wood products. The ban has been put in place in hopes that it will encourage local industry of processed wood products while stymieing illegal logging. In addition, Gabon hopes to profit from the reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation program, which is expected to begin in the next year or so. 7. Guinea suspends agricultural exports to Europe. One of the underrated countries when it comes to raw material potential is Guinea. Yet it comes as no surprise that many West African countries source rice, onions, tomatoes, and maize from Guinea. Guinea is one of the poorest countries in the world, despite being rich in minerals including iron, bauxite, and gold. About 15 products have been banned from export including rice, onions, dried and fresh chilies, aubergines, okra, fresh tomatoes, taro, cassava, maize, corn, yams, sweet potatoes, and palm oil. The measure is unrelated to the end of a grain export agreement between Russia and Ukraine that may affect food importing African nations, an official said. In a statement received by AFP, the trade ministry warned that anyone who contravenes the ban could pay fines. We need to replenish our reserves to ensure food sovereignty and social peace, a trade ministry official told AFP. He said the move was not at all linked to the Russian-Ukrainian agreements. Guinea has since 2021 been ruled by a military junta. It has bowed to international pressure and agreed to hand power back to elected civilians by the end of 2024. 6. Mozambique bans the export of unprocessed timber logs. The Mozambican parliament unanimously passed a bill which took effect on 1 January 2017 concerning the ban on export of unprocessed timber logs from the country a necessary step forward, as described by many, in an effort to protect the country's hardwood forests. The new law gave provisions under which semi-processed timber such as beams, planks, and parquet could be exported, but would equally be subjected to an export tax. There will be no tax on the export of finished wooden goods, such as furniture. The law is expected to halt the devastation of the southern African country's forests, which is experiencing depletion. The issue of illegal logging in the country has also been identified as a key source of revenue loss to the government. China has been the main importer of wood from Mozambique, and there have been incidents of Chinese nationals participating in logging without a license. Chinese traders, according to the Environmental Research Organization, International Institute for Environment and Development, accounted for over 90% of Mozambican timber exports. 5. Namibia imposes ban on unprocessed critical minerals exports. Namibia has imposed an export ban on unprocessed lithium and other critical minerals, as reported by economic analysts and news agency Reuters citing the government. The decision comes as the country looks to capitalize on the growing global demand for metals, which are used in clean energy technologies. The Namibia Information Ministry was cited by the news agency as saying, Cabinet approved the prohibition of the export of certain critical minerals, such as unprocessed crushed lithium ore, cobalt, manganese, graphite, and rare earth minerals. Even though it is not a total ban, as the ministry explains that exports would be allowed in only small quantities of the specified minerals, after the mine's minister's approval.
Namibia is said to hold significant lithium deposits that are vital for renewable energy storage. It also hosts rare earth minerals, such as dysprosium and terbium, which are required for manufacturing permanent magnets utilized in electric vehicle batteries and wind turbines. 4. Ivory Coast Bans Export of Cocoa Beans The name Ivory Coast is synonymous to ivory as one of the main raw materials in the West African country. However, cocoa, the key ingredient in chocolate, is equally Ivory Coast's single biggest source of revenue, providing about $1 billion per year, according to some estimates. Cocoa and coffee exports fueled Ivory Coast's economic success during the 1970s. Millions of African immigrants staked out small plots of land in the lush interior to plant cocoa and coffee trees. It's worthwhile knowing that Ivory Coast is the world's largest supplier of cocoa, contributing around 40% of global output. The cost of a ton of cocoa jumped by 6.2% to $3,393 in 2021, the highest level since January 2010. Cocoa prices have been rising steadily since the last election, and analysts have predicted that they could continue to escalate unless the deadlock is resolved. But cocoa exporters in Ivory Coast said they were confused about the ban, which does not apply to beans that have already been declared for export. Shippers can continue to buy beans from farmers in the interior of the country, according to the Ouattara government official, who did not wish to be named. Apart from economic reasons, Ouattara had repeatedly accused Gbagbo of buying arms and ammunition to crack down on his opponents and launch a new civil war. The export ban prompted U.S.-based Cargill, which buys about 15% of Ivory Coast's crop, to suspend purchases of the bean indefinitely. But confusion reigned in the offices of other exporters, who said they were waiting for instructions from headquarters in Europe or the U.S. Despite aging plantations and years of government neglect of the agricultural sector, the country remains the biggest cocoa grower in the world. 3. Deactor Congo bans export of unrefined cobalt and copper concentrates. Another country to have imposed a ban on the export of her minerals and natural resources is the DRC. The Central African country has banned exports of copper and cobalt concentrate intermittently since 2013 to encourage domestic processing, even though T it has issued regular waivers to the ban. The Minister of Mines of the Democratic Republic of the Congo reaffirmed implementation of an export ban on copper and cobalt ores, which both include concentrates, since 2013. The ministry announced a total ban on the export of unrefined copper and cobalt to be enforced in 90 days for the purpose of expanding the export of domestically processed products. Customers who import ores from DRC, as well as mining companies with local operations, questioned the possibility of implementation of the ban. They argued that a shortage of domestic electricity supply could negatively affect governmental plans to switch the export streams from ores and concentrates to refined products. Nevertheless, during the recent J Summit held in Tokyo, the DRC confirmed its intention to implement the export ban. 2. Zimbabwe bans the export of raw chrome. In a bid to support the domestic ferrochrome industry, Zimbabwe has banned the export of raw chrome with immediate effect, as revealed by the Minister of Information, Monica Mutsvangwa. Zimbabwe produced 300,926 tons of chrome ore in the first quarter of this year, compared with 353,669 tons during the same period of 2020. Total export earnings from chrome ore and ferrochrome, a key ingredient in the production of steel, was $231.5 million last year, down from $266 million the previous year. The southern African country holds the second largest known chrome ore reserves after South Africa, which in October last year announced it was imposing a chrome ore export tax to boost local ferrochrome producers. Mutsvangwa told reporters after a cabinet meeting that Zimbabwe had 22 operating chrome smelters, which could soon face insufficient feedstock if chrome mining capacity did not increase. The ban will capacitate current smelters and maximize the value chain to be realized from the country's abundant resources, Mutsvangwa said. Among the biggest chrome miners and ferrochrome producers in Zimbabwe is China's Singshan Holding Group, which has announced plans to build a carbon steel plant with capacity of 1.2 million tons south of the capital Harare. 
One, Tanzania has banned export of mineral concentrates news that Tanzania had imposed a ban on exports of gold and copper. Concentrate hit the shares of London-listed Acacia Mining, which is the East African country's largest gold miner. Mining has always been a crucial contributor to the Tanzanian economy, accounting for 3.7% of GDP in 2014. The government imposed a ban on the export of mineral concentrates as a means to improve both productivity and manage the resources properly so as not to score low records on GDP. Tanzania has stated its belief that the ban will cause exporters to process, smelter, and refine unprocessed minerals in Tanzania rather than abroad. Acacia mining alone is estimated to account for approximately 2% of Tanzania's total GDP. Some have speculated that the ban may be a tactic used by the Tanzanian government in an ongoing tax dispute with Acacia mining. This appears to be a possibility, as governments around the world look creatively at utilizing measures to ensure that multinational businesses pay their fair share of tax. In response to the ban, appropriately placed foreign investors might turn to arbitration under one of the 20 bilateral investment treaties signed by Tanzania with countries such as the United Kingdom, the Netherlands, Germany, Switzerland, and Canada. Investors not linked to a country with a bilateral investment treaty with Tanzania will potentially be disadvantaged. Many mineral-rich African nations are known for experiencing a resource curse, often blamed on bad governance linked to the ills of corruption, environmental degradation, and human rights abuses. However, the narrative is changing with new visionary African leaders who have got the attention of world powers on Africa's minerals. Africa has 30% of the world's mineral reserves, many of which are needed for the green transition, including cobalt in DRC, manganese in South Africa, and lithium in Zimbabwe just to name a few. It's about time the African continent took her economic development in her own hands. We come to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to leave a like and drop a comment down below.